So, welcome to the Talk Seduction, with mm. me, Tarmim, and Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Dork's Deduction Podcast, where we talk about stuff. Yeah, Matt's yeah, Matt's just the most vibrant person yeah. I, I've ever met in my entire life. I, I'm talkative, so doing a podcast seems quite quite a good idea, really. <laughs> Natural fit. Yeah. This is a special episode that I'd like to call, well, dub the psycho session <laughs> because we don't have, Ma- uh, I was going to say Matt, we have Matt. We don't have Chris or Annie to just stabilize us. And me and Matt aren't the most, what, what would you describe us as? S- not stable. <laughs> yeah, not stable. <laughs> Slightly yeah. deranged at the best of times. Yeah. And we don't have anyone to keep us in check now, so yeah. we'll see what happens. Please don't report us to the police. Yeah, although at least one of us has committed a murder. Yeah, and we'll it's... let you figure out which one after yeah. this podcast, and you can email us or just call the police straight away. Yeah. So if you've not listened to Dork's Deduction, sorry, Dork's Deduction before, we discuss an array of things, like, um, you know, people dying and stuff. Yeah. And, you know... How long do you leave the tea bag in your tea for? The most poignant question I think we should cover at some point is which biscuit is best for dipping in your tea? Ooh. Ooh. That's a tough one. It's just, yeah, some biscuits just aren't good for tea dipping and they're fine biscuits in their own right. See, I like malted milk dipping that. Malted milk? I I like dipping that in milk. Yeah. (laughs) I'm such a child. I I, I dip it in coffee even though I hate coffee. Coffee sucks. Yeah, that's it. That's what, that's the end of the podcast, folks. Yeah. No, that's not that's not it. That's not we're it. We're lucky Annie's I, not here. Yeah, we're lucky Annie's not here. She hate that. <laughs> yeah, her and her coffee. So this week, we are going to be discussing cults, which um, we haven't actually done any formal research on, but we like to think of our lives as research, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we've, we've been, well, between us, we've been trying to fa- find our own cult. Yeah. To start up, well, start up our own cult and yeah. take over the world. I mean, if there are cults looking for members, you know, we're, we're willing to no, join. No, 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 we need senior positions, man. Yeah, true. Because I'm not going to settle for wiping up someone's shit, all right? I want a position of power. No, what's wrong with wiping up someone's shit? Well, I don't like starting from the bottom, okay? I want to be a, in a position <laughs> of power. Yeah. All right. I, I want to make the decisions about who gets sacrificed and who doesn't. Ah, I get you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Should we go into what we actually think a cult is first before we start, you know, freaking people out? Mm. So a cult to me is just some sort of an organization that, you know, I don't know. See. Why did I decide to go first? <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot to say about that, haven't you? <laughs> it's like an organisation of people. Of course, it's an organisation of people. I'm stating the obvious now. But it's a group that are... Der- no, I'm not going to say they're deranged. They um, come together and are le- usually led by someone that's egocentric or deranged or something. I'm being so judgy. I should I stop being judgy. See, the thing is, I I think cults could be any kind of, like, organised thing. I don't think you necessarily yeah, it could be have religions. to be, it could be deranged. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess. Because my dad, yeah, cause... he was a member of, like, the Masons, and that could be, was like, he? considered a cult. Yeah it's, yeah, it's not that dodgy from what I... I think it's varying know. degrees of cult, though. Yeah. Like, if you think of religions, I think for the most part they're not actually that bad. It's just when you get the extremist sects of that of the religion, yeah. which that's what I would signify as a cult. Whereas, like, religions, it's just like a path to live your life. Mm. It's not like you're being forced to do it. You can take yeah. aspects of it that you want to and just disregard other aspects, which is fine enough. It's just the people that are very strict and devout yeah. and a bit too devout. That's what I think is cultish behaviour. So I wouldn't say all sorts of, uh, yeah. the, uh, well, all organisations as a whole, because, no, some of them aren't that bad. Yeah, I, I think my problem, like, with religion is when people start concentrating on what other people do and not just yeah. their own, like, lives. Yeah. It's when they start, like, judging other people. Yeah, that's what I hate, because I come from a very religious background. Well, not very religious. They are, they follow a religion. Yeah. Um, And I'm not... 
exactly strict. I, I, I know that might be shocking to some people. <laughs> I'm not exactly strict. And it doesn't really bother me that much. I, I, I seem to do okay. But it's when people come up to me and ask me why. And you should do this, you should do that, you should do this. That makes me go a bit crazy. Yeah. So I don't mind people being religious. Like, I'm friends with people that are religious. As long as they keep it to themselves. It's their way of life. They can't enforce yeah. it on other people. It's, it's, a, it's a choice. I think that's, that's quite cultish behaviour. Yeah. If you're trying to force your religion and your point of view... Well... On your point of view, we're doing a podcast. <laughs> but, yeah, trying to, trying to enforce the way that you live and the way that you think is right onto someone else. Yeah. That's cultish. Yeah. Are we, st- are we still talking about cultish or are we still talking about what's good and bad? We're doing so know, well we're already. We're talking about religion more than... <laughs> yeah, we're doing cult. so well already. I've I forgotten know. what we were talking about. Um, I don't know. If oh, you, you see, like, religion is a cult, then it's kind I... of relevant. I think extremist parts yeah. of religions are cults. I don't think religion as a whole is a cult. I mean, it's an organisation that believes in something, but it's to varying degrees. You don't. You could. You could believe in God, but not be religious. Yeah. And yeah. all religions are based around. Well, not all of them, because we've got Scienti- uh, Scientology with all those crackheads. But um, all major religions yeah. that revolve around believing in God or gods. Yeah. So people can believe in gods, but not be religious. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Why did we go straight for the religion? I don't know. <laughs> this is be like the most controversial one we do. Yeah, when we this go straight we for the religion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with death threats though because I've gotten threatened quite a lot on the internet. Yeah, but that's a story for another podcast. I don't mind dying, so you know. Yeah, yeah, we're all right with death. Yeah, that's all right. So yeah, yeah. fire away with the death threats. <laughs> so cults, hey. Mm. <laughs> yeah, let's get away from the death threats. <laughs> All right. Um, why would you join a cult? See, I think if I join a cult, it'd be because I don't like modern life or something like that. I don't feel. So you want to be Amish? Yeah, I feel if, if I was like <laughs> cut off from society a bit, I think that'd be the like the motivation to join. You know, to be like like-minded people. <laughs> Yeah, I think cults... I think I actually understand, because I've read a few things yeah. now. I've read a few articles and, like, Psychology Daily or whatever mm. bullshit I looked on. But I actually quite... I, before, I used to just think these are crap props that yeah. join up to cults, but they're not. It's just people that need other people, I yeah. think, that are like themselves or they need some sort of a support system. Mm. So these people, prior to joining the cult, they could have been quite lonely or they could have been isolated in their mindset or living a life that they they didn't particularly want to live. And the cult gives them some sort of freedom. They can be themselves with other people. But not all cults let you do that. Yeah. I think they they offer that, but it's not what they really actually... No, they offer that. It's not what they to actually get, give. Yeah, to indoctrinate, I think I'm saying that right, yeah. people into the organisation. Yeah. That's what they That's what they offer. They, that's what they advertise to offer. Well, I don't want to say all cults. A lot of them aren't like that. Once you actually get in, it's completely mm. different, not what you're expecting. And it's hard to get out. I think also, at the beginning, that's when the mili- you know, the starting of the manipulation. Yeah. I mean, the manipulation can get stronger as it goes on, I think, because they will really want to keep you there. Well, also, I was thinking, it's not just like... I read something that it's not just people who are, like, emotionally vulnerable. It can be people who are, like, idealistic and kind of, you know, want to make a better world, and it can be like that kind of thing as well. Yeah, like hippies in the yeah. 60s. They had... I'd, I'd describe the way that they lived as cultish. Mm. If it wasn't for hippies, you wouldn't have the fucking Manson family, all right? True. True. Yeah. True. Also, Jonestown. That, that was yeah, Jonestown that, as well, it? yeah. I, I think all we should right. get onto Scientology, though, know, at some point. Scientology. I think that's the reason I wanted to do cult. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Some people see it as a religion. The people that are actually, you know, yeah. in it see it as a religion. Some see it as a cult con. Well, it's a religious con. It's a, a co- con. it's a cult wrapped up in a religious con. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the best way to describe it? Um, so, so people that are Scientologists, they believe it's a religion. Everyone yeah. else thinks it's a cult wrapped up in a religious con. Yeah, so some guy named Ron L. Hubbard. Hubbard? 
Hubbard. Is that, is that how you say his name? Hubbard, I think. It's Hubbard. Hubbard in the cupboard. Ron L. Hubbard, who was a pretty abysmal science fiction writer, and he, um, he wrote a self, self-help system or book or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. That should be great. I th- yeah, so. no, no. I don't think it's... I think it might have been a few books, but I know it's a general, like, thing that you do. So a system. Yeah. yeah a self-help system called um, Dianetics, which um, sounds a lot smarter than it is, probably. Because Dianetics, you think it's actual science, but not... No, it's science fiction. Self-help. Science fiction, self-help. How have I not signed up to Scientology <laughs> before? All right, so he he started the religion in religion, religion, religion in inverted commas, in 1954. And um, I'm on the Wikipedia page right now, and what I find quite funny is that the type, next to type, it says religion slash commercial. I'm sorry, I I got a bit distracted. (laughs) So it's a commercial organisation as well as a religion. Basically, it's a tax haven. Yeah. All right, so, so I don't even need to look at Wikipedia. All I know is that Scientology is a crap pop religion. All right, it's about some guy called some guy, some alien or aliens that get dropped into volcanoes on Earth, and they have a god called Zenu. Mm-hmm. All right, and apparently we derive from those aliens. We don't derive from apes, which is scientifically proven. We derive from aliens. Yeah, well. Which I'm, I'm all for aliens, all right. Yeah. I, I think they exist. We live in a, we live in multiple universes. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but there's multiple universes. We already know this. There could be aliens out there, but this crap rock theory yeah. is not true. We have science now to back us up. Okay, so yeah, it's not true. So that's the end of the podcast. I've debunked Scientology. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Also, so, I don't think it helps having people like uh, Tom Cruise and John Travolta being like figureheads. Yeah, they're heads. really, really weird. Because people the, see that and think, oh, let's join Scientology. And we can see yeah. Grease Lightning yeah, but and who, stuff like who that. Who thinks Tom Cruise and John Travolta are cool nowadays? Yeah, I mean, look at John Travolta's face. Look most, what happened to most that. People, most people of our generation wouldn't even know who John... Well, wouldn't have even watched... Actually, no, they would have watched Pulp Fiction because it's awesome. Mm. They would only have watched Pulp Fiction, and the only person they recognise from that is Samuel Jackson and Uma Thurman. Yeah, I've got, I've got a confession to make. I haven't actually watched Pulp Fiction yet. Oh, you haven't lived. But I have watched Grease, so... <laughs> I, you you, I've only just stopped watching Grease every week. It's, it's cool. I like it. I like Did it I as well. Cool? Re- uh, yeah, I like it as well, and I feel a bit dirty for liking yeah. it now because I know he's in Scientology. Like, as a kid, it didn't make a difference because you know you're a kid, you don't know anything about anyone. But as I got older and older, and then realised John Travolta was John Travolta in the sweat baths or whatever he you know goes and meets men wherever he goes and meets men. Um, mm. Yeah, so um, I'm sure, people join Scientology, don't they? So I haven't joined yet. I think we should. Be like Should short be? people, yeah. Yeah. See what it's really like. See what Scientology. Yeah. No, but the thing is, I do sort of want to go to a um, Scientology meeting because they have those classes that introduce yeah. new members to it. But I've I've read that if you go to one but don't sign up, they will never leave you alone. Like they keep sending you stuff and leaflets yeah. constantly. I don't particularly want to get hassled. I get hassled enough. And that I sounds don't like some shops, ha- you know, when you sign up to something on the internet. Y- yeah, it's... but you could put it in junk. Yeah. Okay, you can mark it as junk. Yeah. If they're putting stuff through your mailbox, you're still going to see it. Whereas if it's through your email, yeah, you but just some shops. Ma- like- Lockatan send me stuff. Who they're they're stuff? bloody cold. Lockatan. Oh place. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you buy us yeah. stuff. I'm actually smelling, sniffing one of your candles right now. Oh, oh. I'm not sniffing it, I'm smelling candles. it. I'm, I'm, I'm smelling it. Yeah. It's, the aroma is circulating the room. Not I'm sniffing well, it. It's not like I stand over and sniff on it. Um, actually, no, no, it's not the Lucky Town one. It's, it's the um, the other one. I've forgotten its name. It's not. It was. It's the wrong one, so off topic already. <laughs> yeah, Shit, sorry. what are we talking about? It's probably my fault. Yeah, what were we talking about? Um, you were talking <laughs> um, about Scientologists not leaving people alone. Yeah, they just don't leave you alone, so I'm afraid to go to one of their classes just yeah. to see what it's about. They do actually about, sound and, quite dangerous, because I remember a documentary I watched about them, and the reporter 
after he'd done his report, which was a bit critical, they followed him around for ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The BBC panorama thing. Yeah. Oh, that was brilliant yeah. when he started Yeah, yeah, that was... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I love that. But that's what Scientology does. Yeah. That every person that speaks out to them, they call... they. I think they dub him, like, a suppressive person. Yeah. And they just go for that person. Yeah. Seriously. It's just... Yeah, that is no religion, Okay. And I don't understand how people could believe it is. I mean, it was founded in 1954, so its beginnings are well documented because it's fairly recent. Whereas you've got, like, Islam and Christianity that have been around for centuries, I'm assuming. Yeah, centuries. I I didn't take religious education. I'm apologising if I'm wrong. But centuries. Um, So their beginnings are more murky. So you can't really, you don't know where it's really come from. Yeah, we've got the stories in the Bible, we've got the stories in the Quran, but you don't really know, know where it's come from. Whereas Scientology is pretty well documented. Yeah. And it's well documented that it's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I have to say. So, the end of the podcast... Well, no. I was going to add so quickly. <laughs> no, no, I was joking, I was joking. We're not done. We're not done. You can Because this point's going to be really good. Okay. Also, I did, the thing about Scientologists as well, with what we know about them, why aren't, like, the police and stuff doing more about it? You don't. Because, because they got, police have they got people corrupt. high up. Like yeah, an police are corrupt. Uh, politicians are corrupt. Every the whole world is corrupt. And Scientology has money because it swindles all their mem- members out of yeah. it. Yeah. And if Scientology is the fastest growing religion, I think. I, I, I think I'm assuming because they have members all over the world. All right. Yeah. And some of them, like we, we, we've already named John Travolta and Tom Cruise. That's just in the entertainment industry. Could you imagine what co- kind of links they'd have in other aspects, other terms yeah. of, uh, forms of employment, other, I don't know, in the Justice Department, in the actual There's White House, who knows? Yeah, exactly. So that's probably why they don't ever get busted for anything, which they should do, really. Yeah. I can't believe... Because I'm pretty sure, mm. I, you know, in my opinion... Um, Scientologists, please do not hassle me for this. But in my opinion, I just think of them as thugs that are tax exempt. They're gangsters that are tax exempt. They're out to earn money at, at any cost, and they're harming people while doing it. They're harming their own members. Yeah. Like I'd never want to join the Sea Org. The Sea Org. Sea Org. Sea Org. Yeah, Sea Org. Yeah. I mean, what I was going <clears> to say, <throat> if they genuinely believe what in what they're going on about than the weirdos and if they don't they're frauds so they don't come out of it that well either way oh come on they are frauds all right they do i think when you're at the beginning of it yeah well, i don't i don't understand how it works now because you've got internet you know the end of it for crying yeah. out loud but at the beginning when it was first starting and the internet wasn't as widespread and you didn't have as many people leaving and telling their story people just wanted to find out what the religion was about because there's certain levels and they give you an information on when you reach a higher level but to get to the higher level you have to pay a shitload of money so I think it's just when they get so far in, they've already given their life over to this religion. They've given their money. Yeah. They have nowhere to go. They, they've given themselves over to it out of curiosity, I think. Yeah. Because I think that's the only reason that would make... Well, the only reason I'd want to do it is through cur- because I'd be curious. But I already know the bullshit ending yeah. of the story now. I don't but know. I think... Yeah. I, well, I, just, I bet there are some people who probably do actually believe it, though. Yeah, Tom Cruise. But Tom Cruise doesn't feel... It doesn't seem like an intelligent man to me, really. Mm. Jumping up and down and over so far. Also, His quality of work. He yeah. doesn't exactly know how to assess a script, does he? No. Neither does John Travolta, actually. So, basically, any Scientologists that are in the entertainment industry, they don't have a good body of work, do yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah, what was the last thing John Travolta was in? I mean... I don't, all I, the last one I remember is that Wild Hogs movie, but I think that was like 2007, 2008. Yeah, years ago. And that one looked, the trailer looked so bad. I've never yeah. watched the actual film. It was the one with um, Tim Allen and, you know, oh. all the other washed up actors. Yeah, I, I want to know what Scientology has done to his face, because he's got an odd face. I don't think that was Scientology. I think that is a really bad plastic surgeon. Yeah. And I, don't, I want to know where he got his hair plugs from, because I am avoiding that place like <laughs> plague when I, when I start losing my hair. Yeah, because it just looks like someone's inflated his face. 
It, it, it does seem like his, his body has gone flatter and flatter as the years have gone yeah. on. I don't think that's Scientology, though. I think that's it. Maybe it's the stress it of Scientology. Be. It could be the stress of Scientology. But there are rumours about um, John Travolta. There have been rumours about what he's into and um, what gender he's into, I should say. And um, Scientology are quite homophobic. Scientology, yeah, the religion is quite... Hom- well, I guess the same as other religions, really. But, yeah, they do not welcome homosexuals. So could you imagine the stress of being a homosexual in Scientology? Not just in Scientology, just being one of the figures of Scientology. The, thing, the person that gets people to sign on to the thing. So you have to keep... You have I to keep remember. face... Yeah, you have to keep face. He, he he has to keep face with the woman he's married to, yeah. with his children, and have that facade to get people to join to. I don't think I could live a lie like that. If he is, allegedly, if he is allegedly, cover my ass. if he is living a lie, I don't think I could. I'm sorry, I completely forgot that, yeah, we're recording this. But yeah, if he is. Yeah. Why do you need to cover your ass? In case, like, I don't know, one of Scientology, Scientology's lawyers listen to it and try and sue me oh. for slander. Because, <laughs> yeah, because I have no proof, so I always have to put allegedly at the mm. beginning or at the end. So, allegedly, Tom Cruise seems like he's evil. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. I mean... <laughs> Just put it at the end. I mean, I know Kate Holmes is not a great actress, but... Oh, crazy. Katie Holmes, ever since... When she got... Well, to be fair, I didn't really rate her before. That at least yeah. she seemed like a human being. Yeah. But when she hooked up with Tom Cruise on Scientology, she seemed like a Stepfordian wife, but, you yeah. know... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Stepford wife. She didn't seem to have anything of her own personality. Could you? Can you even remember hearing her speak after they got married? No. Exactly. So, yeah, good, I'm, I'm way on her for getting out of that... Hell hole. Yeah, but you do wonder whether she got out because of the Scientology, you know, what she knew about. I think, no, but the thing is, she was such a public figure because she was married to Tom Cruise. Yeah. She man- She left him quite publicly. She filed for do- divorce secretly. He didn't even know about it. He wasn't even in the country. Her dad is a divorce lawyer. Yeah. So she had people outside of Scientology to fall back on. And her dad could have sorted everything for her. Yeah. So she wouldn't have had to involve anyone else in her life. But, yeah, so... Other people uh, aren't so lucky. She's actually... Yeah, other people aren't so lucky. Other people don't have anyone else. Like, if you were raised in the religion, everyone you know is part of the religion. You can't leave. But, yeah, she came in a few years ago and she managed to leave and get back to her life and hook up with Jamie Foxx, allegedly, who is friends with Tom Cruise, allegedly. Oh. I'm just going to say allegedly after so, uh, after um, every sentence. So she she managed to get out there then. Yeah, she managed to yeah she managed to get out and um, hook up with Jamie Foxx. So yeah, good luck to her child. <laughs> that's all I'm saying because she can't because Katie Holmes could cut Tom Cruise out of her life, but um, yeah, it's a bit more complicated yeah. for Tom Cruise's daughter. Speaking of Tom Cruise's daughter, he has two other kids with Nicole Kidman. Well, because he was married to Nicole Kidman. A while back, I don't yeah. know, before I was born, literally before I was born. But yeah, they were married, they had two children, but she doesn't see them because she left the religion. She didn't see them? She doesn't see them, they live with him. That's she doesn't shame. see them. Yeah, which is weird because mothers usually get custody yeah. and that's what expected. And even if they don't, you get some sort of visitation, maybe joint custody. Yeah. But she doesn't see her children because yeah. they're still part of the religion. Well, allegedly, they're still part of the religion and she is not. Yeah, I'd much rather have my kids raised by Nicole Kidman than Tom Cruise. Yeah, and Nicole Kidman doesn't look like she can emote, so that's saying something. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. Yeah, I mean, because oh. Nicole Kidman, she's still ginger. I think so, yeah. No, I think she very Well, she's an actress. She changes her hair colour, doesn't she? Yeah. So I think she's naturally ginger. So that'd be the only reason maybe I wouldn't want my kids raised by... Hey, no. <laughs> and leave the gingers alone. Don't One of our friends Freddy. is ginger. Yeah, sure. Yeah, our Freddy, our Freddy is ginger. I'm telling you. How dare you? I love ginger people. I love Ed Sheeran. Me too. Then why are we having this conversation? I don't know. You're the one going on about the cold kidman. 
head. You're the one that said you didn't like ginger people. I did never said that at all. Whatever. You said you wouldn't want your child raised by her. <laughs> that's not saying I don't like them. I just <laughs> said I don't want them near my children. <laughs> there is nothing going on. We're going to do a podcast about their not- about ginger people and the bad rep they get because they're not that bad, all right? Can I volunteer I to like do ginger that people. one? <laughs> huh? I'll volunteer to do that one. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have Freddie on this as well. We'll invite a friend. Yeah. I'm called Frederick, who is ginger. We can have an argument about gingers. <laughs> yeah, gingers aren't that bad. They're all right. Getting back to biscuits. They're the same as everyone biscuits. else. No, we're not talking about ginger biscuits. biscuits. <laughs> we're all talking about Nicole Kidman. All right? <laughs> well, don't keep her. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, Nicole Kidman left the religion. Mm. Her husband and her children stayed in it, and now she has no contact with them. I don't know how we got to that point, but we did. Do you think that's something she wanted or not? I don't think surely so, because be what mother to... What mother? Yeah. wants to leave their child behind? Because Sh- surely... It must have been really bad yeah. if she was willing to leave her children behind. Because even if you 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 don't like kids, when you've had a child, you've got that maternal instinct, you've got that bond, yeah. don't you? Well, I'm saying this, I don't have children, I don't want to. So I'm, th- I'm probably the wrong person to talk about it. But I, I'd like to think there's some sort of a bond. Yeah. Everyone loves their child unconditionally. No matter what they do, you have serial killers in prison and their parents banging on about how they still love them and there was something wrong with them, they just need help. Yeah. But, yeah, you've got people like that, all right? So yeah. I don't think she would have left that religion if it wasn't... Well, if it was, if something wasn't really wrong with it. Mm. Something wasn't really wrong with it. So, I don't know. I, I need to rephrase that. If something wasn't terrible about it. It could because be they her children are still there. bad, but... Their dad. Yeah, right. but if you don't have any... Yeah, you can prefer your dad. You can live with your dad. You live yeah. with your dad. It's fine. But having n- no contact with your mother, it's a bit weird. I know. I just yeah. I think... Uh, like, because did, did they do, like, the divorce through the courts, the normal way? I don't... I think the divorce... I don't quite know, because this is way back when. We're yeah. talking years and years and years ago. But I think the divorce they might have sorted between themselves, but custody is a completely different yeah. thing. You can get a divorce and still have to work out custody. Yeah. Custody can go through the courts. But if you think about it, this was before Nicole Kidman won her Oscar, got really, really successful. She only got successful after the divorce. Mm. But, uh, uh, and Tom Cruise had everything. He had the money, he had the power. He could have done whatever he wanted. He could have paid people off. And like we said before, Scientology has probably has links everywhere. In every industry. Yeah. So he could have easily got those kids and got custody of those kids and poisoned them against her. You don't know. Allegedly. Yeah. He really does Allegedly. sound like a bastard, doesn't he? Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> How the hell did we go from talking about cults in general to talking about Tom Cruise's custody arrangements? I don't know. It's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing... And his... Kids are ad- their kids are adults now, so they could easily have contact with their mother, but yeah. they don't. So doesn't that show that they've been fed something, allegedly? You'd have to think so, wouldn't you? That yeah, I think we should, we should name this podcast allegedly. Maybe not, you know, maybe not. In the interest of balance, I suppose. Allegedly. Allegedly. I just like to say allegedly. Let's name this podcast alleged- allegedly, yeah. not the psycho session, because we've been quite sane here. I thought it was going to go off on a tangent, but we've been quite sane. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll call this podcast allegedly and not so psycho. See, people yeah. put us down, but we're the sanest ones here, right? Yeah, exactly. We're the most level-headed ones here. Yeah. We take all considerations into it and account. Yeah. Yeah, so Scientology is weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's an intelligent response <laughs> to the question of Scientology. <laughs> it's weird. What else can no, we say, no, apart from I don't, a bunch no, of I don't apples. even know. What were we... Do? We ended up talking about John Travolta and Tom Cruise. Oh, so something about Scientology which um, is quite interesting is their auditing process, mm. which they hook up, hook their members up to, like, lie detector tests, uh, lie detector machines, not tests, and asking questions... And to, I don't know, I guess it was some sort of cleansing ritual, like when you go to confession at a church. Yeah. But usually at confession, you're not hooked up to a lie detector machine. Yeah. And they have to pay to do this as well, which is another reason that Scientology is not like any other religion, because... Scientology, every aspect of it you have to pay for and yeah. you have to give all your money over to. Whereas the other religions, yes, they ask for donations, but it's not enforced on you. 
You can go to church without paying. You can go to confession without paying. You can go to the mosque without paying. Yeah, sure, they hand around a basket to give money to fix the church roof, I guess, and give to charity and stuff, but that's the extent of it. So how I don't understand how people could put Scientology in the same group as all those religions that we've, well, that have been around for centuries. Yeah. I think the important thing is, like, with churches, though, they don't literally force you into doing that. No, you don't. You always have a choice with the other religions. I mean, sure, they've given you, like, a layout of the way to live and the way, like, they would expect you to be, but it's always up for interpretation as well. Yeah. Whereas... Scientology, the reason it's like a cult is because it's not like that at all. It, you lose all sense of self. They make you behave cer- a certain way. They make, they make you follow a certain way. And you end up being crazy like Tom Cruise. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. There is an interesting thing that I was reading about like the type of people who lead cults. So like us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. Well, no, because like, obviously there's an egotistic side to it. But yeah. um, I was reading about, like, Jamestown and the Heaven's Gate cult. Mm. And that someone was saying that with the leaders of the cult, it can be, like, repressed homosexuality and stuff like that. Maybe. That's, that's being a bit, you know, because you don't know. I, I think that could be one reason. You can't just yeah. put all cult leaders under that little bracket. But that can be, like... Because I, th- I think it's more of an obsession with power and control. Yeah. But I, I was thinking, like, in the, like, the way that their attitudes to, like, sex, so like, in, like, Jonestown and... Well, it's more Heaven's Gate. They kind of, like, you can have sex. And you just... Think, you can again, even no, have no, sexual again. thoughts if you had, to, you had to admit to your sexual thoughts and stuff like that. Do you think the leader followed that rule? Or did he go around fucking every member of the Not church? Not him, of this uh, he did eventually have himself castrated. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he did, didn't yeah, he? and a couple of oh, others yeah. did as well. Uh, it's again, more I think that's more to do with... I think that's, yeah. again, that's control as well. Yeah. But, yeah, it could be homosexual. You could read homosexuality too yeah. into it. But it's like with Jonestown, that was um, that was the opposite, where he told... He, he, I think he said that um, everyone was homosexual, apart from him. Really? <laughs> yeah, so he kind of said... He basically, he said, uh, he either said you can't have sex or you have to have sex with someone of the same sex. Oh, and while he'd that's... go around having sex with everyone. To be fair, if you're a cult leader, wouldn't you abuse it? Yeah. I don't, the thing is, I, I think, I'd like to think that as well if I was to start, if yeah. I was to start a cult. But if these people were, they're essentially worshipping you like a god, wouldn't that ego, wouldn't your ego just yeah. go through the roof? It's the same, yeah. like, celebrity, really. If you get these people starting and they're pretty humble, and but then the more and more successful they get, the more and more arsy they get. Yeah. It's the ego. Mm. And, they and yeah, they be, get very demanding. So they end up being like cult leaders. Yeah, they punch people. They punch people. You've got Naomi... It's Naomi Campbell that chucked her phone at that, that assistant yeah. or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think... I like to think that I'm a decent person sometimes and I yeah. wouldn't abuse my power, but I probably would. Yeah. Because ju- just looking around, like, everyone does. Yeah. I don't... If you have the opportunity to do something, you'll mm. do it. I just didn't want to admit, <laughs> kind of, I'd, if I was a cult leader, I'd have sex with everyone. Just make We're in a, a safe bit. place here. We're in a safe place. Yeah. So basically, that's what we're admitting to. <laughs> yeah, that's what if I'm admitting to. If we were cult leaders, we, you know, you'd all be fucked. I think, yeah, I think if I was going to lead up a cult, it would be like, there's this reality TV show called The Following, yeah. starring a young man called Kevin Bacon, who is an FBI agent. Yeah, he's called, that, uh, he he's changed that his name. He, he cha- Kevin Bacon? Yeah. He, he was like a massive dancer back in the 80s. Yeah. He came from a town that wasn't allowed to dance. Oh, and um, he changed he changed his name to Ryan Hardy, and now he's an FBI agent mm. hunting down... Well, it started off as Joe Cowell. I don't know that what the fuck is happening with season three so far. I'm only two episodes in. Yeah. But, yeah, they end up having, like, a serial killer cult. Aww. But then again, I don't think I... No, I know I've just lovely. said that, that. Yeah. But now th- look, thinking about it after I've said it out loud, I probably wouldn't want to do that. Because serial killers also obsessed with control. Yeah. How the hell would you have control over a load of serial killers because they're obsessed with control? That's quite a challenge. Yeah, so, so basically, yeah. So basically, I've just thrown my whole... Uh, that's what I wanted in my life. 
I've just thrown that all out the window. (laughs) Control. I wanted to have a cult like the following. Yeah. But now, now I've just ruined my own life. I'm going to go cry for an hour. Oh, you're not going to clean out the podcast, are you? What? You're not going to include that on the podcast, are you? Mm, I don't know, but just... I, the, the podcast is all about the real. I've just realised that um, my goal in life will never be achieved. Jesus. <laughs> oh, God, God what God. am I living for now? That's it, I'm starting a suicide I, I knew this podcast was going to turn into <laughs> therapy or something. <laughs> yeah, this is an outlet. I tricked you into it. <laughs> Oh, I've got to be Mr. Therapist now, have I? Uh, or you can talk, it's fine. I don't, I don't have anything to confess. <laughs> really? No. Weren't we supposed to be scripting a, a movie about a cult? Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm more about the people than the, you know, the control. The ideology. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'm obsessed with control because I keep pushing it, but I think that's what cults are about, yeah. it's about control. Yeah, after me, I actually wouldn't mind being a cult leader. No, I don't think any of us would, really. I'd, yeah. It's just like being Hitler, basically, isn't it, really? Pretty much. And he never had any problems. I know. Like, he's still going strong, isn't he? Yeah, he's in Argentina yeah. somewhere, you know. Or, yeah. yeah. Is he in Argentina? Well, that's where all the old Nazis used to go, so... Mm. I think it might be a bit obvious to go there. I bet you just stayed in Germany. Yeah. He's just like, no one's going to expect to find me here, are they? Yeah. I'd, I'd probably... Like, if I murdered someone, right, I'd just go home. Because no one's going to expect to find me there. Yeah. Probably not straight away, but yeah, I'd go home. I, I don't know. His home was bombed a bit during the war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Just a little him. bit. Just a tad. <laughs> just a tad. Yeah, I mean... Funny fact about Hitler, he married a Jew. Did he? Mar- um, Eva Brown? I, yeah, Eva Braun. Braun. <laughs> It's spelled B-R-A-U-N, so I'm assuming I don't it's know, born. that's how they say brown sometimes. Is it? Yeah. Well, I grew up in England, all right? That's how I say born. <laughs> well, we'll find out at some point. When people rise us to yeah. hate mail. The thing about a good say about Hitler, though, is even if, even if he did, like, get out of Germany, he's not going to be alive now, is he? So what's yeah, the point not, of worrying about it? <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless he's been cryogenically frozen. Yeah. That's the stuff that Ron L. L. Ron Hubbard, L. Ron Hubbard wrote about. No, I don't know. I didn't bother reading any of his crap. No. But um, I think that's probably a better storyline. Yeah. But yeah, how did it... Yeah, well, Hitler could have been seen as a cult leader as well. Oh, for sure. A political cult leader. A political cult leader. So basically, we're all in cults. Basically, that's what I was going to say. Oh, most political parties... Essentially, yeah, they're cults cults. Of a kind. Yeah, because they they spout their ideologies of life. Yeah, and they get people to sign up for it by voting for them. Yeah. So yeah, political parties could be cults. Yeah. What else could be a cult? Well, we all know television could be a cult, and I am very, very knee deep in that cult. Yeah. So when I said I don't want to clean up anyone's shit, I probably would if it was in the sense that I was watching television. If it was uh, that guy from Supernatural. Castiel, what or guy? He's Castiel. Oh, okay. Why do people think I fancy him? I just think he's like the most amazing person in the world. It's not just Castiel. It's Misha Collins who act, who plays Castiel. They're just amazing, separately and together. Okay. Yeah. And I just, I just like to converse with him one day. And well, I've even tweeted that, but I've shit. never had. Res- <sighs> uh, so that's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I need to think about that. I. I- if I needed shit. to, yeah, if I had to, to, like, talk to him, then, yeah, I'd clean up his shit. Oh, God. If he was talking and shitting at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if he's talking and shitting at the same time, how am I cleaning up his shit? Where is he shitting? Um, I don't know. You know. I, I'm, I, I'm fairly certain he uses a toilet. At least I hope he uses a toilet. What if you were in his toilet somehow? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I, I, I'm short, but I'm not small. I'm not going to fit into his toilet unless he has a big ass toilet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. To end this co- this part of the conversation, Castiel and Misha Collins are very, very amazing. That is all. And Tommy wants to clear up their shit. And I would willingly clear up their shit if it meant that I could hang out with Misha Collins for a while. Sure. Because yeah, he's Misha Collins. Yeah. And he doesn't reply back to my tweet. I tweeted him once, and yeah, nothing. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna, just gonna cry. I'm, I'm gonna cry again. I'm gonna cry again. Yeah. 
I have a lot to cry about after we're done with this podcast. I know. Your, your life's been virtually <laughs> destroyed on this. It? it really has. But, yeah, what do I have to live for? We, we are going to see you tomorrow, aren't we? Maybe, no, <laughs> that means I have to join a cult because I have nothing to live for. I need yeah. some sort of support system. Bloody, uh, it comes full circle, really, doesn't it? Pretty much. So, yeah. I mean, we're going on about how odd cults. they are. We're pretty yeah, much. Yeah, we are part of them. I think everyone is in some sort of a cult. Because our friend group, we are the cult of weird things. Yeah. We are obsessed with weird things and like, the most random things. Yeah. And, yeah, it's... Yeah, but ours isn't harmful. I think it's varying degrees. So I think cults are fine yeah. because people need to... People... I was going to say people are made to be together and be support systems, but that's not true. It's doggy dog world. Yeah. Fuck it. Then <laughs> That's another point to have, reason to have cults. How about we get people to join up and break them down, break their spirits... And we should just be top dog. Yeah, I mean, that sounds great yeah. to me. It sounds like really so good fun. Basic, yeah, basically, this episode of the podcast is just to, mm. you know, get you guys to sign up yeah. to um, our cult. What are we going to call our cult? I don't know, actually. <laughs> Do- uh, well, this, well, the podcast is called The Dork Seduction. The Sex well, Bonds. Well, that's not, that's not, that's, yeah, that's not the perfect name for a cult, though, really, is it? What, The Dork Seduction? Yeah. I think Sex Bombs. Sex Bombs? Yeah. If it's going to be about me. Could you imagine yes. how many people would go <laughs> if it's going to be about me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Could you imagine how many people would Google that, though? We'd be, we'd be found if we were called sex bombs. True. People would discover us. I don't know. If, if they saw me like, on the poster, they might be tempted not to <laughs> join. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll just Photoshop Cliff Richard's face onto yours. It's fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> That'd be great. I've got, I've got my sex bomb socks, so... <laughs> I could pose in them. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. We'll have you in a Playboy stance for the for the leaflet that we're going to stuff through everyone's letterbox. Yeah. Well, we should do a calendar for my cult as well. <laughs> Is it just going to be you on every every yeah. month? Okay. I, I, I could Who's like recreate the Cliff Richards. Cult. <laughs> it's got to be a <laughs> Cliff Richard cult kind of theme going on here. <laughs> Doesn't he have his own, his own cult? called his fan base they're all actually they're on their last legs aren't they yeah his fans are on their last legs so we could bring some youth to the game i'm I'm the new cliff richard basically yeah you're the new cliff richard okay i don't actually sing a cliff richard song i don't actually know any Um, he does those terrible christmas covers that's all i know summer we're all going on the summer holiday oh we're all going on a Summer oh, okay. holiday. That is the cult's theme tune. <laughs> okay, maybe got edit out. <laughs> yeah, maybe edit out my singing because it's terrible. No, keep but, it in. Keep it in. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the soundtrack to our cult. It will be the Cliff Cult. Yeah, I, I've always been a cult, personally. Yeah, me too. Actually, yeah, everyone calls I me get a so cult deep for some in, reason. I, I didn't mean cult as in the organisation, but I think I'm very. Very adaptable to cults. So I think I'd be easy to sign up, actually. Yeah. I say it's stupid, but I'd be easy to sign up. My whole life, I've just gotten obsessed with things, and then I need to be involved in it. And, yeah. I, so I'm really annoying, though. I'll be obsessed for, like, a week or two, and then I move on to something else after that. Um, no, the obsession still stays. It's just not as strong. Yeah, it's always like I that. Gain new, I, I gain new obsessions. Like Supernatural, I only first started getting obsessed with it because the guy I found was qu- uh, found in it was quite hot. Yeah. But then I got over him, but I'm still obsessed with the show mm. because it's a fucking brilliant show. Yeah. Oh. How many times have we mentioned Supernatural in this podcast? I'm so giddy. I'm so giddy. Yeah. We've mentioned Cliff Richard and Supernatural in a podcast about cults. I've got a better idea. What? A Cliff Richard and Hannibal cult. <gasps> To be fair, no, you know what? You know what? Hannibal has its own cult that are called the Fannibals, and I love their name. I love their name, the Fannibals. So let's leave them to it. We could do an actual cannibalism cult, eh? Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you don't sound so enthusiastic about that one. I I get really funny about the meat I eat anyway. Do you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm quite picky, so I don't know how I'd adapt to eating human beings. But I guess we're all, you know... We are all guilty of auto cannibalism because we eat our own skin cells and things like that, and what? so we all cannibalize. <laughs> Everyone, like the ones in your mouths that just rub off when your tongue's against it. Everyone ingests their own skin cells or stem cells or whatever cells in their mouth. Yeah. 
mouth cells. Uh, I, as you know, I clearly did not get a degree <laughs> in science or biology. <laughs> I, d- I did not get a degree in biology. Didn't but, you? yeah, everyone, everyone is, you know, guilty of some sort of cannibalism. But I don't think I could get into it proper. Yeah. Okay, you know what? Hannibal makes us, it makes me feel like I want to be a cannibal sometimes. It does. Because the way he cooks his food and lays it out looks, makes it look so good. I get so hungry watching Hannibal. Yeah, also, he looks so well dressed as well. He is well dressed. Mad Smart Mickelson is, I, I think that's how you pronounce yeah. it, isn't it? Um, he, he isn't impeccably dressed I in know. that show. But I think he's impeccably dressed in real life. Yeah. Because I've seen him outside the show and he still looks pretty good so I think it must just be him everything must just look good on him Hannibal Hannibal could take a bite out of me anyway yeah he could eat me wherever he wanted (laughs) 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 oh god I'm sure he'd enjoy it well but you haven't got a lot of meat on you so I don't think you would I think you'd pass no sorry maybe maybe start eating more chocolate oh bollocks (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what? I can't be the only one that's depressed. I thought I was the one that wasn't going to cry during this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Tears are streaming down your eyes. <laughs> oh, I was really looking forward you know what to getting eaten do? as well. By Hannibal. <laughs> Sorry. You never know. What if we kidnapped Hannibal, mm. locked him in a box for like a box, maybe a room for a while, so he's like starving, yeah. and then just put you in it? And yeah. you're the only thing he's got there, there to eat, so he'd eat you. You wouldn't look as good because he'd be kidnapped and trapped in a room so he can't present you properly. Yeah. So you wouldn't look as good on the plate. I doubt he'd even I put d- you on yeah. the plate. He'd just take a bite yeah, out of you. Yeah, he'd just be straight in. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let's do it. So, uh, Mads, we're coming for you. Yeah. If you're listening, we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always coming for Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> You had to go there. Yeah. Ooh-wee. Is this actually part of the cult? <laughs> I don't know. Is this we've part of the covered so many. No, but we've done well. We've covered yeah. so many aspects, all right? We've talked about religion. We've talked about cults in general. We've talked about Scientology. We've talked about Tom Cruise and John Travolta. And we've talked about television. Now we're just talking about our favourite cults yeah. and what we'd like to do with them. So, you know what? If people get scared, tune out. Yeah. Um, I'll be. Uh, yeah. So, tune out. It's a bit late to tune out, really, yeah, isn't it? if you've got this far, your life's yeah, probably if you've got this far, you're, you've, If you've got this far, then you've yeah. probably already called the police. <laughs> and, um, so, should we start wrapping up, or do we have more stuff to say? I don't think so. I, 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 you know what's, like, disappointing is that I have, like, articles from, like, psychology yeah. websites about cults, and I haven't referenced them at all. <laughs> I know. I made, like, <laughs> notes, and I've got to <laughs> That's what always happens. I always, like, make notes and get all these web pages, but I never use them. I completely forget, and we just start talking shit. Yeah. But it, it was nice shit to talk about. It was like Misha Collins' shit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we are done for our discussion on cults and Tom Cruise and John Travolta and Supernatural and Hannibal and, you know, we didn't even talk about Mads' cheekbones. His cheekbones are amazing. I know. Okay? So, yeah, so that's my mention of Mads' cheekbones. He has a very amazing bone structure. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this and you didn't get freaked out because I think we held it together pretty yeah. well. We didn't sound too psychotic. I yeah. think we sounded perfectly sane. But, yeah, so if you enjoyed it, find us again next week, I guess, when we'll be talking about more things and stuff and yeah. other things. I think so this, yeah. I yeah. think Hannibal's got a good tongue as well. He's got a nice tongue, yeah. but, yeah, I think we should let people go yeah, to stop talking about it. Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> we, we'll do a separate podcast on Hannibal. Yeah. So um, for, uh, I think that's it. Can we, are we finally going to say goodbye now? Okay. Uh, all right, that's it for us, from us oh. now. So goodbye. Bye.